Oh my goodness, can you tell what's beneath these covers? Whoosh. New wheels for the 4C. Oh man, and ain't they pretty? Now these are a set of Stefania style wheels from Bespoke Forge. The fronts are 17 by eights and the rears are 18 by 9.5. So pretty meaty. And if you're in the kind of small 4C community, you've probably heard of Bespoke Forge, but you might not have. It was started by a guy named John who just really wanted to design his own wheels. He figured out how to get them manufactured and all that good stuff and did a group buy on the 4C forums. And he's actually turning it into a nice little business for himself because now he's designing BMW wheels and I don't know, some wheels from some other cars too. And I know my buddy Art has him designing wheels for Miatas. So that's kind of awesome. Oh, and I want to mention how well these things were packed because the way that I was alerted to these things arriving was I could hear the UPS driver throwing these boxes around inside his truck outside my house. I was inside, heard it from inside. So I go out there to, you know, greet him of course. And I'm just standing in my driveway waiting for him to get done and loading. And I see him, drop the hand truck with these things loaded on them out of the back of his truck so <laughs> yeah they survived though they look great and let's check out these center caps yeah you gotta love small business you know super fancy wheels and the center caps are shipped in a ziploc baggie but holy cow is that pretty man i want to put that on a chain and just wear it it's my medallion for going to the club and i think it's really cool that you can actually see the machining marks down in there. Now, some people might think that should be polished out, but it almost looks kind of bejeweled or something, doesn't it? That's so cool. But getting back to these wheels, this is a brushed bronze color. And if you notice, there's what looks like to be lots of little scratches in the metal. That's the brushed finish. And the bronze coating is sort of like a translucent clear coat that goes over, colored clear coat, and gives it this effect. And as far as I know, myself and only one other guy has gotten the br brushed bronze finish. So, I don't know, it's kind of exclusive at this point. I'm sure after seeing this, more people are going to go for it though, because it's pretty dang nice. They did turn out a little bit lighter color than I originally wanted, but, you know, like when I first unboxed them, I thought, oh man, this is gold, not bronze. But after looking at it some more, you can kind of tell that there's like a brownish tint to them i yeah i don't know it's it's gonna look really neat the indoor lighting just doesn't do them justice so we'll, we'll really see what it looks like once we get them out in the sun but here's the best part about these wheels they're super light they're made from a big old hunk of forged aluminum and machined out and now of course they'll weigh different once we get the tires mounted on them but let's see how much they weigh just with the naked wheels i've got the old trusty not legal for trade fish scale suspended on my camera tripod here and this one's the front wheel so the 17 by 8 and it's reading just one ounce under 16 pounds so 15 pounds 15 ounces that's pretty freaking rad now i have the rear wheel the 18 by nine and a half on there and it's reading 17 pounds 14 ounces that's nice and light oh and listen how this thing rings like a bell all I need is some chance going. So I guess you can see my tire machine in the background back there. I wouldn't exactly say I'm very familiar with it yet. I've really only ever done one tire. <laughs> so I'm a little scared to try to put my brand new RE71 RS's on there. But uh, I don't know. I guess we just have to do it and find out. So like I was saying, I'm not super experienced with the tire change machine when I was mounting these tires. I did this time lapse with the intention of talking you guys through how I was mounting the tires, but I think I'll give you a better description here a little bit later in the video. About the only interesting thing that happened while I was mounting these tires was that this one tire required the cheetah. I just couldn't get the bead to seat without it. But all the other tires, the bead seated just fine sitting on the machine. So, well, with this out of the way, let's jump into the future. If you've been following the channel for a while, you probably know that I'm actually kind of terrible at getting videos out in a timely manner. But in this case, that works out good because all the footage that you've watched previously in this video have been from about seven or eight months ago. And I've had all that time to test out the wheels and see how I like them. And I absolutely love them. Everywhere I go, people remark about just how fantastic they look. 
But you know, since I have the 200 Treadwear tires on them, I can't really drive those for an extended amount of time, so I ordered another set. I got this box in the mail yesterday. Yeah, just one box out of the four that's supposed to come. I actually chased down the UPS driver and had him make sure that he didn't have the other three in his truck. But apparently those are gonna arrive on Tuesday, but we can go ahead and check this one out. And this one's a little bit different. Let's get her unwrapped and we'll see how she looks. Wow, that is a lot brighter. <laughs> I don't even know if that's coming through on camera, but holy cow. This is the brushed copper color with a satin finish, as opposed to the brushed bronze with the gloss finish of the other ones. Man, that looks pretty wild, doesn't it? And since I'm gonna be taking the 4C on a little road trip here soon, I got some Bridgestone All Seasons for these guys. The RE980AS. I had a previous version of these tires on my BMW, you know, what, I don't know, like 10 years ago or something. So hopefully these are pretty good. I remember them being good on my BMW, so. But yeah, so I got some Bridgestone 200 Treadwares for the other wheels and some Bridgestone All Seasons for these wheels. I just can't seem to get away from Bridgestone this uh, past couple of years. So I've had this generic ceramic coating for a while now and been wanting to try it out and I might as well just try it on these wheels, huh? It's probably a good idea to ceramic coat these things so they don't get messed up. The directions on the ceramic coating say you should wash the whatever surface you're gonna coat with dish soap first, so I'm gonna do that real quick. There's probably still some factory goo on these wheels, you know? Should go ahead and pop that out. I don't know if I should really ceramic coat the barrels or not. I mean, I'm not too concerned about them getting all that dirty. In fact, it's probably better if they're darker inside there. Like, what do you think? Just let this inside collect all the brake dust, but have the outside all nice and shiny. Let's see if we can rinse all the soap off now. I'm gonna dry it reasonably well with a towel and get it the rest of the way dry with the air. You know, this stuff probably deserves its own video, but the real test is just gonna be time with this thing. So I guess just come back in six months or so and see if I actually like this stuff. But in this box, you get the little container of liquid and the little sponge. You got the instructions, I've already read those. Oh, you get some gloves. I'm already wearing gloves, so don't need those. These are the microfiber buffing cloths. We need uh, someplace clean to set these for a minute. And these down in here are the applicator cloths. So we'll take one of these guys. We'll wrap it around the sponge, just like so. Oh, and this is funny, it's the Advanced Graphene Ceramic Coating. Ceramic Coating Professional. Car Detailing upgraded version is 70 milliliters. I have no idea how long 70 milliliters is supposed to last, but I'm sure some of you guys have more experience with this sort of thing than I do. Let me know in the comments below how these things actually work out. It's got a tiny little cap thingy on it. I'm gonna pop that open. And the instructions are to just put three or four drops on the sponge. Yeah, I kind of shake it a little bit. All right, that looks good. And you're supposed to wipe it in straight lines, but you know, this thing doesn't really have straight lines, so. Let's see how this works. You can definitely see it gives it a little bit of a shiny finish, a wet look. And they say just add a couple more drops whenever it uh, doesn't look like it's applying any more stuff. Like maybe I'll add a couple more drops now or go back over this part. It looks a little too wet. Getting into these little crevices are going to be kind of hard. I might have to just do that with my finger. I don't know. You know, I asked the guy that makes these wheels if it's okay to put a ceramic coat on a satin finish. And he said absolutely, but it looks like it's turned the satin finish glossy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll uh, go back to satin once it dulls up. You know, I think I'm just gonna take it off the little sponge here because I think the only way I can get into like these little crevices here is just using my finger. And there's like little spots like underneath the spokes here. Yeah, there's no way you can get to that with a sponge. Probably ceramic coat down in the bowl holes too, you know? And of course we can't forget the beautiful center medallion. I swear these things look like jewelry. All right, immediately after you apply it, you're supposed to buff it off with the microfiber. Well, I can already tell that's pretty slippery. Whatever this coating is, just makes it feel slippery even just doing this, wow. Hopefully all the brake dust and dirt and whatnot slips right off too. What do you guys think? Does it look glossier than it did before? You know what, I'm not sure now that I wiped it off, can't really tell. Looks pretty fantastic though. The instructions for this stuff didn't say that there was a cure time. Uh, I really hope it's instantaneous because I want to go ahead and mount a tire on this. I guess we're just going to see how well that turns out. Get the wheel up on the tire machine. I'll rub tire snot all over the tire, get it all good and lubed up. I don't know what they put in this tire snot, but it smells kind of nice. 
you gotta pay attention to what's the outside and what's the inside. This wheel is almost too too tall for the machine. I have to slip the tire up into the duct and bring the duct around. Get the tire partially pushed on there. Lock the duct down on the rim. I use this knob to set it so that the duck is just barely floating off the rim there. You have to position the edge of the tire so that it goes under the head of the duck and on the back side it's kind of going over the top of the back of the duck. Now that's the easy part, getting it started like that. Now this part is where I wish I had a helper arm on this tire machine. I kind of cheaped out, got the one that didn't have a helper arm. But the good news is I can actually buy one and put it on here. I just haven't done that yet, need to. This is why the helper arms would be nice. Here I'm having to use two tire irons to push it down into the groove. And she pops on just like that. Oh, and of course I'm an idiot and I forgot to put the TPMS sensor in. Since I dropped the TPMS sensor down in there and try to get it in with the tire on, now you get to watch me take the tire back off. You just slip the tire iron over the duck head and pick up the edge of the tire. It looks like it's resting on the rim, but it actually isn't. It's, it's resting on the duck head. And then the tire comes up like that. That was a little fiddly, but not too bad. You probably re-lube the tire. You never have too much lube, right? Well, maybe. Now I can release the duck head, swing that out of the way, release the wheel. And you know, I don't see any mark on the tire indicating which side's the heaviest side. I would align that up opposite to the valve stem, but well, we're gonna take the valve core out. That way when we shoot air into it, it's got a straight shot and it'll hopefully seat the bead. There we go. There we go. You gotta pop up here too, man. You can do it. You're so close. Come on, do it. Come on, come on. Woo! Put the valve cap on and let's get her over to the balancer. All right, let's get the wheel up on the balancer here. Put the little centering cone on. This thing's got a little quick disconnect or connect, I guess you could say, on it, which is nice and handy. Make sure it's good and centered. Give it a spin and take a look. Got this little extra light in here. Help me see what I'm doing. So the balancer tells you what it wants. We just turn it on and it's on the A measurement right now. So we have to take this little guy right here and run it up to the edge of the rim and look and see what it says here. And that is five and a half. So on A, we turn this down to 5.5. Now we need to take this little gauge thingy right here and do on the outside edge of the wheel, like rim to rim. And that's showing like 10 and a half. So that's the B measurement. And then your D measurement is your diameter, which is an 18. And this button right here selects which type of weights you want to place. I like to do the aluminum too, but you kind of set them on the inside a little bit for stick all weights. Just hit that button until you're on aluminum too. And then give the tire a little spin to kickstart it and hit start. And then you put the wheel where it's got to go. And if you look here, you have two different weights. You have like one that's right up by the face of the wheel. And then this one goes kind of just on the inside of the lip. And as you can see, as you turn the wheel, you get an indication of where you're at. And like right now we're straight up and down. I'll have to put a half ounce weight in this position right here, straight up right here. One of the things I've noticed about these weights is if there's still some of the tire snot on the wheel, they, uh, they don't stick. So I take just a little bit of brake clean and clean off the area where I'm gonna put the wheel weight on. And these just peel and stick. You know what, I think what actually should be really cool is if this thing had like a little laser guide or something. I think that would help out, but just doing this is all right. All right, now we go go find the spot that has the three quarter ounce. There we go. And that's gonna be more uh, towards the face of the wheel. Just right where the, the barrel kind of like comes in, if you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna do the same thing, clean that spot. 
really good with brake cleaner. Before I put the quarter ounce on, I'm gonna go ahead and spin it again, see if we're in the ballpark. All right, so this side zeroed out, that's good. I'm trying to find the spot where this is saying it needs more. All right, all zeros. And you know what you could do with these weights that I, I didn't do this time, but I probably should have, is that you can actually just take masking tape and stick them on the wheel first to determine how many you really need and what location. And then you can actually permanently affix them. That way, in case you have to pull a weight off and reposition it or something like that, you're, you're not actually wasting them. I did have to move the weight a couple times to get that, but you know, it is what it is. And it comes off the machine super easy. Just hit that little lever and the nut thing comes off. Take your cone out, slips right out. The only thing left to do is put that beautiful medallion in. Nice. So one of the things that's not that great about these wheel weights is, you know, they're a light color, which sort of goes with the wheel, but not really. So I grabbed some of this uh, Venetian gold metallic paint, and this is acrylic. I don't really know if it's gonna work well on this, but you know, hey, I'm gonna give it a try. Happy little gold wheel weights. Ah, uh, you know, that color matches pretty good. It doesn't really seem to wanna stick to the wheel weight though. I did clean it with some brake cleaner, and that's thoroughly dry, so I don't know. I might just have to let it dry and maybe put a little bit more on. Not really sure. I don't know how acrylic paint works, to be honest. Enamel paint probably would have worked better, but I, you know, I just didn't find any short notice. And of course, this edge right here is what you're really gonna see from outside, so I gotta get that. This stuff doesn't really seem to self-level like most other paints. Maybe I should let it dry just a little bit and see if I can smooth it over a tad. It only took about 10 minutes and the paint is tacky now. I'm gonna try to give it a second coat. You can tell it's already kind of making the wheel waste disappear. It's kind of nice. I'm glad I guessed correctly on this color. Yeah, that looks really good. You can barely see the wheel waste now. That's awesome. All right, we have the brushed bronze versus the brushed copper. Which one do you guys like better? The car is filthy, but we have nice afternoon sun here. A little bit of golden hour footage. Tell me what you guys think. I think it's probably an unfair comparison because have the brushed bronze on the front and the brushed copper on the rear and the ass of the car just looks better anyway, so. Another thing I think is kind of funny is if you look at the tires, like these ones seem like the tread pattern is a little bit narrower. Get you a shot from this side. These certainly pop more and the brushed bronze are more subdued. I don't know, can't decide which one I like better. Well bye, thanks for watching, like and subscribe.